What's up? Welcome into your daily Buckeye Blitz for a Sunday. <clears throat> Excuse me, miss. Sunday freaking fun day, September 15th, 2024. Uh, got a little instant reaction for you from some of the, uh, I guess we'll call them bigger games, ranked teams uh, from yesterday. Uh, obviously, no Buckeye game to talk about, but we will be talking Buckeye football tonight, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right here, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Facebook is almost there. Almost. We're getting there. Facebook is coming. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so let's get into it here. Uh, please hit like and subscribe, all that stuff. Hit the bell. You'll get notified when we do go live. And it's just convenient to have that little alert for you. And it's all free. You don't have to do anything. Sign up for anybody. Uh, no strings attached. So uh, let's talk about some games here. Um, I want to give you my two cents. Let's start off with those uh, pesky Wolverines. Uh, two and one on the season now. They did beat Arkansas State yesterday. Um, I would say a combination of poor coaching on Arkansas State's part and poor execution in the field goal game. Um, play calling was uh, just terrible. Um, kicking field goals on fourth and ones, disgusting. Puke when you're playing, um, a you know, a top ranked team, well, top 20, top 25 team, let's call them that. Uh, you gotta, you gotta like pull out all the stops, man. You gotta go for those fourth and ones, fourth and shorts, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta score points, right? I mean, anyway, Butch Jones, shocker, could not unravel the mysteries of the dreaded end zone. So, Anyway, um, <clears throat> the Cheaters had a hell of a day at quarterback. Uh, three picks by Davis Warren. He was he was eleven of fourteen. Did not throw an incomplete pass. Should be noted, and he should be commended for it. No incomplete passes. One hundred percent completion percentage, except three of those were pesky interceptions. So uh, did not throw a touchdown. Uh, he was 11 of 14 for 122, the three picks. Um, and then Alex Orgy came in. Hey, he was two of four on pass attempts. That's a banner day for for Mr. Orgy. Uh, just 12 yards, though. <laughs> did have a touchdown pass. So, uh, you know, we'll see. It sounded like after the game that uh, Sharon Moore was um, not going to commit to anything. They've also got some offensive line issues they need to sort out. Um, sounds like the center is a big problem. So he's not committing to anything yet. We'll see. Um, we'll, we'll do a uh, – we'll dig into who, who the Wolverines have next uh, tonight. But uh, running game, I, again, I'll say it again. I said it last week. Uh, Mullings is their best running back. It's not even close. Well, he had 15 carries, 153 yards. It's over a 10-yard average, two touchdowns. He's your best running back. Uh, Donovan Edwards, 17 carries, could only put up 82 yards, one touchdown. But um, Orgy had three carries for 27. Uh, uh, Benjamin Hall, Samaj Morgan, you know, Davis Warren got in there. Some of these were sacks. But, uh, yeah, uh, ran for 300 yards, which you would expect uh, a team like Michigan to do. And receiving 134, not a surprise there because they don't have a functional quarterback. But uh, Arkansas State actually threw the ball on, on the cheaters quite a bit. 222 yards, um, a five-yard average, two touchdowns, just one pick. I was impressed with that, um, going back and looking at the stats. Third down efficiency, seven of 19, not great for the Red Wolves, but the cheaters were nine of 12. Um Cheaters put up 435 total on offense, uh, 280 by the Red Wolves. I was surprised that they actually threw um, Will Johnson's way a couple of times. So um, they just couldn't run the ball for shit. Arkansas State couldn't. Um, and Michigan with seven penalties for 69 yards. Nice. Uh, good job there. And the three turnovers. So uh, they held the ball long, you know, almost 35 minutes. You know, that's what they do. But uh, – um, the the Red Wolves came back in the fourth quarter, put up 15 points. I mean, they scored on their last two drives of the game. So 
you could say that that the cheaters were just mailing it in at, at that point, but uh, they're in big trouble. Um, yeah, Davis Warren is obviously not the not the answer. Why not get the kid in there, Jaden Davis? Screw it, man. Burn the red shirt. He's probably going to be the starter next year, anyways. So what's one more you know season? So anyway, uh, so yeah, cheaters get by. They're still in the top twenty, probably. I doubt they'll move up much, if at all. Uh, let's talk Ducks and Beeves. Uh, Oregon started off fast and really didn't slow down. 49-14 was the final there. Oregon, they were running the ball strong, man. They were they were pounding the ball down Oregon's throat in the first half. They just, their defense couldn't stop Oregon. You know, they couldn't, there's no way they could possibly score with the Ducks. But um, the running game looked good early, and they, they – they got shut down in the second half. I mean, they went scoreless in the second half. Oregon outscored them 27 nothing. So the Ducks go to 3-0. and um, Gabriel, 291, two touchdowns, no picks. The run game was, was nice for them. Uh, Gabriel did have a 54-yarder. That was the long for the team. He had uh, four carries, 64 yards. A touchdown. Jordan James, eight, just 86 yards and two touchdowns. Then Noah Whittington chipped in 64 and a touch. So had some big plays there to uh, uh, Tez Johnson, uh, Jaden Lamar. And yeah, everybody got in the act. Treshawn Holden had a touchdown. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a pretty easy game for the Oregon offense. I wish the, that uh, the Beavs would have Continue to try to run the ball and then play some freaking defense. Their defense was bad. Just two TFLs on the day. Zero sacks. That's not going to get it done. The Ducks had seven batted down passes, three TFLs, two sacks. So, um, yeah, not a great day for the Beavs. I was hoping that to keep that one closer and didn't really go my way. So I hope you didn't use my picks this week. Uh, what else? Alabama, Wisconsin. You know, uh, it's nice that Bamba went up to Madison. You know, that's a big ticket for for Madtown and uh, brings a big, big uh, following. But uh, Luke's in trouble, man. I'm not not his job. I'm just saying his offense is, is again, not good. Um, I don't know that Tyler Van Dyke gets hurt early on. And then, you know, that – you're you're really struggling to beat Bama with with a, tie, a TVD, but without him, you're even in bare trouble. I mean, Braden Locke came in. He was 13 of 26, so 50 percent. Again, an Alex Orgy kind of day. Uh, did have one touchdown, no interceptions. So uh, the run game put up a buck 50. That's not bad against Bama. Uh, but they couldn't really move the ball at all, not consistently. And it was the Jalen Milrow show for – for the uh, the tide, uh, almost 200 yards, three touchdowns. His he is so wildly inaccurate, though. Uh, you see these these deep balls just way out in front of the receiver, a crossing route way out in front of the receiver sometimes, and then he'll drop one in the bucket in the corner of the end zone. You know, it's like you don't know what you're getting from this freaking guy. He also led his team in rushing, 75 yards, two touchdowns. So. Yeah, uh, Ryan Williams, the young guy, uh, he's really showing up big time. Bernard, had they both had touchdowns. So, yeah, um, Bama just lived in the backfield all day. It didn't matter who was quarterback back there. Uh, Joe Montana was not going to save the uh, Badgers. So, uh, easy game for Bama. They win going away. Uh, 21 to 7 was the total, were the totals in the, the second half. So, Again, thought whiskey would keep that closer. Now you're starting to see teams kind of separate themselves and and kind of show who's who's a step above other other teams. And Luke Luke's got to get some stuff working. Phil Longo, that offense, they gotta they gotta figure out some things, man. Um, last one, yeah, I don't care about Notre Dame, Purdue, um, Georgia almost falls to UK. In the blue gap, bluegrass state, um, Carson Beck just 160, no touchdowns, no picks. That's a very pedestrian day for somebody I thought was the Heisman favorite just a few weeks ago. 
Mm, maybe not. Um, Vandegrift for Kentucky just 114. The running game just put up just over 100 yards for Georgia. Then Kentucky rushed for 170, man. Um, yeah, not a lot going on on this stat sheet. It's kind of boring. But that the pick six that um, the Alabama – or, I mean, uh, the Georgia receiver caught and he, like, rolled over, flipped it up in the air, and the Kentucky dude caught it, took it in for six. That got – reversed to an incomplete pass, which is horse shit, uh, that would have been the ball game. That would have been Kentucky, you know, gets the dub. Um, but was not to be – Kentucky was 9 of 16 on third downs over Georgia. Georgia 5 of 13. That really stuck out, stuck out to me. The yardage was very close, 262 to 284 in favor of Kentucky. Um, and penalties. Penalties killed Georgia, man. Nine for 85. When's the last time you saw a Georgia team with nine penalties? Um, man, uh, Kentucky controlled the clock, too, 35 minutes of possession. So they lost. They did lose a fumble. Kentucky did. So that you can't do that against a, a team like Georgia. But I'm not convinced with freaking Georgia at all. And, again, another uh, kind of bonehead coaching coaching decisions you know just like uh just like old butch butch uh butch jones uh butch davis butch jones i don't know doesn't matter uh, they both suck so anyway yeah um kentucky you didn't expect them to be close you know they're one and two on the season now but uh they they put a little scare into the bulldogs and kirby not so smart so um, those are the games I was I was really paying attention to. I had the quad box going throughout the day with a mixture of different games uh, on YouTube TV, so that was nice. Use that. Uh, I don't usually use that when the Buckeyes are on, but yeah, it was pretty good for a bunch of teams I kind of I'm paying attention to, you know. So uh, those are the big games. We'll talk about more about these and some of the other ones. Arch Manning is he QB one in Austin? Excellent question, Joe. Glad you asked. No, we'll see. We'll see how long Quinn Ewers is out. Maybe they uh, they uh, keep him on the shelf for a couple extra weeks, make sure he's 100% healthy, right? Uh, so we'll see uh, who Texas has coming up and um, and everybody else. Same with Bama. Bama still does not look like the fourth best team in the country to me. Um, I think you could also say Texas is better than Georgia at this point. So anyway, we'll talk to you tonight, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Hope you'll join us right here on YouTube Live or Twitter or Instagram. So I got for you today. Talk to you later. Burp or tomorrow. Go Bucks. <laughs>